everybody, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Joni Young and I'm going to be showing you step by step how to paint this lighthouse landscape today under a magical sky. So first of all, I just want to say thank you so much for all your warm birthday wishes. You guys made me feel extra special yesterday, so thank you so much. All of my patrons who are making it possible for me to continue with my channel every day, all of you out there that support me, I want to say thank you. And if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe, tap the bell so you get notified every time I post a new video. So if you guys are ready, we're going to work on a 16 by 20 canvas today. I'm going to list all the colors and brushes I'm using below in the description of this video. So I hope you guys enjoy watching this today. I, my goal is to inspire you, motivate you, and get you painting more. So we're going to get right into this painting. It's on a 16 by 20 canvas. I primed it once with acrylic gesso. This is the gesso that I use in case you guys are wondering. And I know you are because you guys are always asking me. So this one, you can use any acrylic gesso that you want. This is, just happens to be the one that I like to use. It's acrylic gesso by Daler and Rowney. And what I do is just apply one to two coats. And what it does is um, sometimes you get those canvases that are a little bit tougher in tooth or you can get a finer tooth one. Um, the canvases that my hubby picked up for me are a little bit rougher so you can see all those little pits in there and it gets it, it makes it really hard to cover the canvas with the paint without all those little spots showing. So when it's kind of like when you're putting makeup on and you put primer on so you're covering up you're filling in any little um, imperfections so the gesso fills in those little cavities there and what it also does is it keeps your colors nice and vibrant for years to come. It also helps the surface um, of the canvas become smoother so that you can apply your paint a lot more easily. And what I like to do after that's all dry is just take large, for this painting I'm using this large filber brush, it's a number 50, and I'm going to get it a little bit wet. So this will also help me spread the paint a lot easier. Otherwise, it can be a little bit frustrating and you feel like you constantly need to um, go over with more and more paint. But if you have just a little bit of water on the canvas, and you can use a fine misting spray bottle as well, that works. Um, you definitely don't want it dripping. But right away, I'm going to approach this lighthouse landscape uh, that was requested by one of my patrons. So uh, I'm going to take a bit of white and a little bit of black and build this up in a grayscale first because it's a night nice scene, it's really moody, and then I'll come in over top and filter in a few other colors. So I'm gonna start with the horizon line, a little bit lower than halfway. Just pull nice and long sweeping strokes like this. And then I'm just gonna go down a little bit lower. and work that paint out. It's gonna be a little bit darker right where the horizon line is. And then it's gonna to start to get lighter up here. And it's gonna, we're gonna to start to change the direction of our brush. We're gonna go start to flow up and scoop up on an angle like this to get those flowy types of clouds and movement going in the sky. And just reload my brush now and come in from the bottom. Now we are going to have um, like a cliff or a hillside here, but we're going to paint that in after. We just want to work background to foreground. I'm going to take just a little bit of water, help pull and spread this paint. I want it to look a little bit creamier and softer, so I'm going to use a little bit more white. I could have actually done three coats. That's how uh, rough this canvas is. Three coats of acrylic gesso probably would have done it, because you can still see little bits in here where I have to go over and over to try and fill that in. I'm going to come in here with a little bit more black and deepen this up a little bit. Use any brush that you guys want for uh, your backgrounds. 
and say for this line, if you're just a beginner, and it's got a round end to it, so you're gonna be kind of fighting that a little bit to get a straight line. So you might wanna use a flat brush, but it's definitely not necessary. And I'm gonna come in and scumble here. It's a little bit too dry for me. So I get a little bit of water, a little bit of that black paint and make a nice light gray color. And I'm just gonna start creating these little scoops Stand up here. I want to make a really magical looking sky, so I'm going to do a few different tones. So I still have a bit of gray, hint of gray in here, and then I'm picking up white. So I'm going to get a few different tones when I come in later with my colors. And right away, I'm gonna come over top with a bit darker. And I'm gonna go scoop, 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 and then flick. We'll try that again. We'll go this way. And then you can go both ways. You want to go easy on the black because acrylic paint always dries a little bit darker, right? So you need to decide how moody and dark you want your sky to be. And you can always come back later on and add um, a lighter tone of gray or lighten it up after with a bit of white and the color that you want to use. But if you wanna not have to do that, then just be a little bit lighter on the black. Okay, I'm gonna come in with a little bit more of my light gray now. Right below the horizon. Turning my brush so my handle is like this. I'm going to start to travel with my brush, the light layer over top. And then in here, I want a little bit more black because I really want my light from the lighthouse, those light rays, to show up. So they're going to be nice and bright. So I do need this to be a little bit darker and I'm just going all sorts of ways here kind of just dancing around with my brush and then a soft hole darker. So try to do it in one brush stroke and you'll make it a lot more seamless and smooth. And I'm going to go right down, pull right to the end, and back again. Make it just slightly darker here. I know I'm going to come over that with my hill, but I just want to make that a little bit darker there. And for my next brush, I'm going to use an angle brush. And this is a number 10. And there's no name or make on this brush, but this is from a big set that I got on Amazon. Now, if it's still available, I got it a few years ago. 
I will add the link below. If I happen to forget, just leave a comment below in, this, in the comment section of this video and I'll surely go and look for it and supply it there if it's there, okay? Getting my brush a little bit wet, I'm gonna take mostly black, a little bit of white there. Mostly black. And I'm just gonna come over and add some rocks. So this is why I like to use the angle brush because I can make my rocks look really uh, edgy and have those natural angles to them without having to try very hard. I'm gonna bring some right down at the bottom here and a little bit more water in my brush. I'm gonna be tinting these with a bit of color later on so I don't mind that they're a little bit see-through. As long as I've got this dark base here, and you can see some places there, uh, dark gray. Some I used, some areas are a little bit more black. So I can just kind of take my brush like this, and go down the edge. You want it to look like they're overlapping, right? So um, that'll help them look more real. And then we can have a few right in here. Make it very random and natural looking. And then we're gonna come up. I get a bit of water on my brush here. I could have used my big filbert for this, but I'm gonna come up and down and make my hill come really close over halfway mark here halfway down the canvas, I'm going to go past that and then up just over and above the horizon. I'm going to take that black with a little bit of water, it doesn't matter if it's perfectly straight, it doesn't have to be, and then it gets edgy and round down the cliff. Then we've got a few little, few little rocks down in the water. Now here's where we're gonna make it sort of patchy because we've got lighter areas where we're gonna have some moss, some greeny, yellow, ochre, green, gold type of moss. And then other areas are gonna be darker. And I haven't really decided what color I'm gonna to use to tint my dark shadows with. I might use um, phthalo blue and burnt sienna, kind of nice. Course we want to make sure this isn't see-through here so I'm going to take a little bit of black and white cover this up here a little bit of water to help a bit drippy you can just catch those drips right away I like drips when I paint more like abstract fantasy style Not for this specific painting today. So I'm catching those drips rather than letting them flow down the canvas naturally like I, I would in my other videos. And if you guys are really into fantasy and seeing more of my fantasy intuitive types of paintings and tutorials, then look uh, in my playlist. I've got a playlist all, all about fantasy pieces. I'm going to get a little bit more black, a lot more actually, I always pour out more than I need. You can store your unused paints in the fridge in a really cold spot. Um, I don't know about the freezer, I actually haven't tried that. Um, but yeah, covered with saran wrap or tin foil in the fridge in a cooler and then you don't have to waste any paint. some little rocks and things back here.
a few more shadows here before we move on to the next step. I won't be painting my lighthouse till after. I want to work on the sky and adding some color here first, and then we'll concentrate on the lighthouse. Sometimes if you load your brush like this and turn your hand over to grip the brush this way, you can kind of get a more of a natural, as if you were using a palette knife, effect on your rocks and hills and cliffs. Kind of makes it, oh, and mountains too. This is a great technique for painting mountains. It just gives it that rough texture that would take you a lot longer to achieve with a liner brush or any other brush. So if you just turn it over like that, pull and drag in different ways, you'll be left with all those little lighter spots. Okay. Now just for fun, because I can't help it, let's add, you guys know I love my staircases, Let's go ahead and add just a suggestion here that there's a little, a few little steps that go down here. Something leading up this cliff side. And we can definitely make them narrower and a little bit more subdued and tucked in there later on. I think they're going to have to be narrower as they get up there and then a little bit wider down here. But just so that we have something leading up there. Okay, so I'm going to dry this all off. And then I'm going to come in with colors. And it might actually, the background's pretty much all dry. It's quite warm in my studio today. It's just the foreground here that's not. Okay, so the sky is all dry, the water's dry. Most of this blacker, darker area is dry, but part of it is still a little bit wet, but I'm not gonna be touching that right now. I'm gonna work on the sky first. The colors that we add in the sky, I'm gonna reflect uh, down in the water as well. And I've got a few fun colors that we're gonna be using today. I've got a little bit of Neon Yellow Warm by Whole Valley. We're gonna be using Touch of Neon Pink. Or luminous opera or opera and I've got turquoise and a little bit of phthalo blue. My phthalo blue today is by Glenbacher. And for the background, you can use many different brushes, whatever that you, whatever kind of brush you feel comfortable with. You can use a filbert like this. This is the number 12. And um, I'm using this size because of the size of my clouds and the areas that I'm working on. I've got enough room in here that I can create a little bit more detail by turning my brush on the side like this, kind of just scumbling around. So I'll be doing that to create some kind of a nebula type of design and all sorts of stars in the sky. And I'm going to begin with a little bit of my white and my neon yellow warm. I don't know if the camera really shows how beautiful this color is, but if you guys look for the link below, you can get a whole set of these on Amazon. They're very beautiful and they last a long, long time. So I'm going to get my brush just a little bit wet. And I'm going to start right in here where it's going to be pretty bright. I'm going to go over here and add a light layer. I'm going to need a little bit more water on my brush. So you can really add the colors wherever you want 
as dark as you want or as much as you want or as light as you want. You have full reign of the amount of color or colors that you choose to use. Have fun with this and it's going to look beautiful no matter what you do. We've got this grayscale underneath and it's just going to be beautiful. So try to have fun and don't be fearful. Don't let that fear rob you out of your joy of creating and painting. And don't forget to add a little bit below. Reflecting down in the water here. We'll take more of this and a little bit of water. Again, it's really warm in my studio today. I don't know why I had the heat cranked up so much in here, but it's making me feel like I have to add a little bit more water and work with my paint a little bit quicker. So I'm a, I'm a fast painter anyways, you guys know that. But this makes it a little bit tough. And I want to add a little bit of a, a warm glow kind of back in here too. So I'm just going to turn my brush, my handle up towards the sky, push little tiny circles really close together without taking my brush off. Make that just a little bit brighter. By making it a little bit brighter, it's going to make this darker without having to come in and add more black because that might just be way too dark. We can achieve a darker effect here by making this lighter. I'm going to take a little bit of white and then right in here, this is going to be my brightest spot in the sky. And kind of travel around with our brush, twisting, twirling it around, kind of like how you would paint uh, some really crooked old looking branches. a little bit more generous in some areas here and then just kind of blend okay so now what I want to do without washing too much of that out of my brush I'm just gonna get a little bit wet and I'm gonna take go into my turquoise now And I'm going to start from up here. Now see how I'm bringing it down over part of that yellow. Oh, and I picked up a little bit of this. Happy little accidents. That's going to look really pretty. Now I'm using this brush stroke to create some sort of pull and movement. So it's really, you have the power in, in your wrist and your brush stroke and the brush you're using to decide where you want to take your clouds and the movement and the overall mood of your painting. Okay, that really, really affects and changes uh, the painting by the brush strokes you use and, and add. So I'm going to take a little bit more of my turquoise now, bring that down here in the water. Oh, that's pretty. All the while leaving hints, subtle hints of that gray through. You know what I think I'm gonna do is take it just a little bit, a little bit of that minty color. Kind of come right in here. I just have a low laying. Cloud line that has a bit of a glow. Maybe meets up for that. Let me just bring this up a little bit higher. I'll kind of line that up. And I'm going to bring some turquoise over here. Now, this time I'm going to use more color and less white. So, this is going to be more like a filter.
Now filtering just means that, you know, picture putting on some sunglasses that have a yellow lens on them. So you're still gonna see everything, but it's gonna have a yellow hue to it. So when you filter, it's see-through, it's transparent. You're, you're not covering up um, what's underneath. You're just changing the tone or the hue of it. I want this to be a little bit more gray. I didn't get a good enough coverage you see with my gesso so I can see that canvas underneath and it's kind of bugging me so I'm going to try to cover that up and correct that. Make this a little bit darker up here. Just by adding some more paint over I can do that. And now I've got this color I'm going to come in and add little bits of cloud veins, I guess you could call them. Not thinking too much about it. Just kind of weaving in and around. And then quickly, I'm going to just go over to a liner brush while this is still a little bit wet and I can do this. Oh, it's drying really quick. It's a race against time today with this acrylic paint. Don't keep your studios too warm, guys. That's what happens. It makes it tricky to blend your acrylics because they just dry way too fast. Just take some of my green, still use my liner brush. And I come right in here. And with four, that can dry too much. I'm gonna just wiggle that in there. Gee, you could just play with skies for hours, couldn't you? I love painting skies and creating all sorts of magical looking clouds and light effects. Okay, so back to my little filter brush. Let's just get rid of a bit of that there. I'm just going to blur this up slightly. Soften, soften. I'll come in with, there it is. <laughs> Couldn't find my phthalo blue there for a second. I'm going to phthalo blue. Start layering over up here. Bring it right at the top. And come around the side here and add some. I'm going to keep with this sweeping movement that we've got, brush stroke.
I'll just go really lightly over the horizon and come in between here. Now this time, I want to add a little bit um, more shadow to the water. I'm going to take my green, black, and blue. So we've got like a deep, moody color here. Okay, see what we're working with? And I'm going to come in a little bit more water. Now when we get up to the rocks, I'm going to ease off. And if you accidentally go over, you can just come over top and kind of scumble it off if you need to. Now I want to make this water a little bit darker. Oh, I've got a little runaway drip there. hope you guys are enjoying this live chat today it's so much fun I love live chats and if you're not in the live chat you can watch this as many times after the live chat as you want feel free to leave comments below you may have seen this sooner with the early access given to patrons over on my patreon so if you're interested in getting early access and extra content plus monthly giveaways, and if you'd like to, most importantly, um, help to support my channel and my videos that I make. Okay, so I like how this is looking so far. I'm going to come in here and add a little bit more of my neon yellow and white. Right, I'm going to bring it just right in here. I was going to leave the brightest part there. I'm, I'm going to make it bright but I want to have some little cracks in here, little pockets of light peeking through some of those clouds. generous here with the rest of my neon yellow that I've got. Just scumble over here. I'm going to dry a little bit darker. Okay, so now I can come in with my neon pink. I'm going to make a really pretty purple color by taking my neon pink with some blue. And first I'm just going to do before any of that, I'm just going to do a little bit of pink, a little bit of white. I'm going to take the excess off, just wipe it off on the towel, and then just little touches here. And then at the top is where I want to have a little bit more of that violety color. Into it in here. Be a little bit more generous now. I'm going to turn my brush over again like this. And I'm going to take my blue with my pink now. A little bit of white. See a gorgeous, gorgeous, almost like a grape purpley color. Smoky and hazy looking right in here. I love it. Okay, 
I think this color would look gorgeous. Just enhance the horizon a little bit. Then, I'm deciding right now, this is the color that I want to add to my rocks. Now that's going to dry a little bit darker. I'm just going to tone that a bit, a little bit of black, a little bit of turquoise. in here now before we come in with with our green green gold a little bit of yellow ochre why not just have a little hint of this in here those colors are very complementary together so I know that's gonna look look pretty and then just a little bit more black through some of these rocks I've got some of those colors I just want to bring a little bit more shadows in here and silhouette And then I'm just going to come around the edge here and this will be like a little bit of some foliage and bushes on the side it just helps to set the little staircase in there better so another brush that I want to use now this one here. so in my makeup brush set that I know many of you guys have got now you'll notice that you've got a little tiny mop brush like this. So I'm going to show you how we're going to use this right now to create a little bit more detail in the sky before we do our spray of stars. And then before the lighthouse, we're actually going to do those beams of light coming from the lighthouse and then the lighthouse over top with a little bit more light. So we need to do those soft, misty uh, rays of light behind the lighthouse first, but we're going to use this first little bit of white. I haven't got my brush wet yet. I don't know if I need to at this point, but I just want to get back a little bit more gray for this area that we're going to be working on. And I'm just going to start creating little circles like this. And I'm going to travel with my brush. I'm just going to travel around, going on a little journey in the sky. I'm in such a good mood today. See my pretty roses here? It was my birthday. You guys made my birthday so special. I want to thank you guys so much for all the wonderful, warm birthday wishes. You guys are so sweet. I can't believe how lucky I am, I am to have so many wonderful subscribers and friends. So thank you guys all very, very much. You made my help to make my birthday so special. I spent it with... Um, well, the family that I can, you know, with co coronavirus right now, depending on when you're watching this video. My little grandson, my grandbaby, he's going to be two in June. And my daughter, my son, my husband, and the rest of my family, they don't live here. I've got another son that I miss so much, but someday soon we'll be able to travel again and I'll be able to see the rest of my family. So I'm just creating some little clouds here and I've got the perfect size brush. Now I just got a little bit of water on my brush so that I could bring those bristles in tighter together. By doing that, I can create little, these little veins through the clouds. And then just come over in some areas because I really don't want to lose some of that um, black and white, that gray. I really like the play on colors with the gray. I think they really um, complement one another. And so I'm just going to come in and see how easy it is to do this. So if you're 
wondering if you've wrecked your painting and you think you lost all of that black and white and oh no what should I do should I throw this out and start over no you can always acrylic is so forgiving you can go over it as much as you want you want to just make sure that your sky isn't so bright that your stars won't show up so as long as you've got a nice mixture you know, as long as you've got some glowing spots here and then some darker areas. I'm just coming here and just start to dab a little bit of light. I think just with my liner brush, I've got it right here, so I might as well take it. I'm gonna do maybe just a little bit of suggestion here of the water against these rocks. Not a lot. I want this to mostly be about the sky, right? And that beautiful lighthouse. I love lighthouses. We went on a bit of a lighthouse tour years ago when our kids were small in, along the Oregon coast. And a few of them had some really haunted ghost stories that I found interesting and fun. That was a trip I'll never forget. That was, I went there a couple times actually. It was a lot of fun. Very, very beautiful, but not the warmest for swimming. <laughs> All right, so I just got a little bit more of my phthalo blue. I'm gonna get some more of my pink here. Rip off the excess, a little bit more blue, tiny bit of white. Love that color. Wipe the excess off a little bit. I'm gonna create a bit more depth here. Now, I don't have the best easel. Kind of moves around on me, but hopefully you guys can see this. I'm gonna come right over the top. Now I would do this with hardly any water on your brush at all because it's, you're going to end up losing control of the amount that you get on and it won't look as soft. So you want it, you want it to feel soft and, and hazy looking, right? And a little bit more in here. I'm gonna take a tiny bit of that pink. And then wipe it away. So add a little bit there and then take it off. Now I'm gonna come in with um, the green gold and some yellow ochre. I'm using Artist Loft High Viscosity. This is level three. And I've got yellow ochre by Arteza or Arteza. So I'm just going to use my filbert brush here because I'm just filtering over. Uh, we're going to just already have that texture from how we applied the black earlier, like when I had my flat brush or my angle brush and I was going like that. If we do want to add any more texture, I'll let you know which brush we're using. I probably would switch over to my oval or one of my mop brushes. So first, I'm going to take a bit of my yellow ochre. My brush is pretty dry and I'm just gonna, wherever I have these lighter spots here, right? 
that's going to be my brightest areas. They're not going to be white. They're going to be yellow ochre will be the brightest. I'm going to go over the stairs too. We've got hints of that purple, smoky purple plum color that we made in here. And that's really beautiful with yellow and green. Come up and over. Okay, now I'm gonna get all of that paint out of my brush. Just got a towel nearby, and I'm gonna take one of my favorite colors. I love green gold. I didn't even know about this years ago. And well, now that I've discovered it, I'm finding that I'm using it quite often. So I just want to go over just about all this. This is transparent, right? So it's, you're going to still see all those shadows that we've created underneath. Mossy looking stairs. I'll come over top of some of my yellow ochre just to make everything flow nicely together. In some areas, I'll kind of do a little messy scumble. Why not add? Because a lot of the rocks around the ocean have that green algae on them or moss and even a hint in the water a hint of this in the water a hint of it up in the sky and come around with black and clean up this area here. Make it a little bit smoother now. Still edgy. We've got layers, right? So we've got this bank or hill right here in front. And then as you get over, you've got areas in here that come down lower. So if you want, like I said earlier, you can come over and add more black if you need to. It's totally up to you guys how much you want to add. I'm just going to do holding my brush like this and I'm going to start to make it look like my stairs are going over that way. I like to have a little bit of flow to them. They're not going to be very bright. Remember, it's nighttime. Just a suggestion that they're there. Take my green gold with my black. And just do little, little lumps like this, little half circles for some little 
a little bit of the rock wall or bank there to just really set those stairs in. I'm going to do my light rays now and then I'm going to do my stars. That way I won't wreck any stars when I'm adding my light rays. So we're going to do it in that order. Well, I'm going to do mine in that order. You can do yours however you like. And I'm going to be using a flat brush. I recommend using a flat brush any size that you want. Keep it small, I guess, because our lighthouse is oh, going to be right about here. And so you want to have an according to, to size, right? So I'm just going to get a little bit of water on my brush. I want to have some phthalo blue, a little bit of turquoise. And I probably got a little bit too much water on my brush. We'll see here. Okay, so I'm guessing we're going to have it right about there. Say the lighthouse can be right about here. Let's just do that. Roughly add that in. We just need a little bit of a placement right now so that we can know where our light is coming from so that it lines up. Right, guys? I'm not worried about how straight that is or how perfect that looks right now. So I'm going to start right here. Pull and flick. Flick. So simple. Just use the right brush. A little bit of white with whatever color that you want. You don't have to tint yours blue. I like this pretty blue though. And back side it's gonna have a little bit and a little bit there I'm gonna take some more white now and we're gonna bring this up a little bit brighter and then as it dries we'll be able to brighten it even more in with a little bit of the white. Okay, I'm going to use a little bit more blue turquoise. see a huge amount in there so I'm just adding a bit of blue here I'm just going to come down the side in blue as well and it gradually goes down right wider And then just a couple. You probably see better if I turn my brush like this. And just some little windows. 
just using the corner of my brush. few little lines there and then I'm going to make it kind of rounded on the top. Bring it up round and then a little line. I'm going to take a little bit of black. And just go along the edge and then add little bits of bushes or trees grab a little bit more of that green gold just with the corner of my brush make them bumpy I know that's going to dry a lot darker And a few little lines. Remember, we can barely see this, guys. It's far away. Don't get lost in trying to do too much detail. I'm going to turn my brush over like this. I think I'm going to take most of that paint off. Come back down. We're just going to add a little bit of a shadow. Again, wipe the excess off on a towel. I don't want very much moisture in my brush at all for this. Now, I'm going to take a bit of white and yellow ochre. A little bit more. It's okay if you have a little bit of that blue in there. It's sort of a greenish tone, and I'm gonna catch. I'm gonna catch some light right in here. And by adding a highlight here, I'm gonna give more of a a round shape. We're gonna make that roundish shape that we want for our lighthouse. So shadow on one side, a brighter highlight on the other and then just keep it neutral in the middle. Now we've got a little house down here. I'm just waiting for this area to dry guys first before we add some more uh, highlights. Um, I'm gonna take a little bit of white yellow ochre again and I'm gonna add my little house. I'm just gonna do a little, little rectangle here my yellow ochre and then I'll take a little bit of blue for the front of the house. You might want to use a smaller brush for this. Then I'm going to use some black with my blue and I'm going to do the roof line. So I'm going to come up over part of that bright yellow ochre. Just cut across. And put some little bushes, get that tucked in there. I'm going to put a little chimney, two little lines like this, either side. One right up on the peak there. And then a few little dabs for some windows. Just going to make this line come out slightly wider and 
There we go. A little bit more black there to my roof. And just a few little bushes and things. And we've got our little, our little path that leads up here. And I can just come in. If you have a really small filbert brush, you can take, have a lot more control for these bushes that are a bit farther away but see how the light is hitting this side so that makes me think that there must be and i'm just taking my yellow ochre green gold a little bit of white maybe a little bit of blue just getting a brighter makes me think that the light's coming in on this side obviously right so but they just have a dark roof otherwise we would brighten that up too a little bit of light there can't really see this house very much, so I'm just going to come down a little bit here. A little bit like that. You can, if you wanted, add the indication of a few little dense posts for railing if you wanted to. But I don't think I want to... I might come back to this painting uh, at a later time and and to do that, but I don't think I'm going to do that right now. I just want to have a few more little lines in here. And a messy old looking staircase. Could just be rocks. what I'd like to do actually is just come in with my little oval uh, mop brush here. I'm going to take a combination of my green gold and my yellow ochre. See how I'm tapping it? Because I want to turn it this way. And I'm going to start some little bushes up here, smaller, and then I'm going to come down here and make things gradually turn. They look a little bit puffy. And a little bit more in here. See, as it dries, then you'll know where you want to have something brighter or darker. Okay, so I can safely come back in now and add some light back in here. So I'm going to take my white, little bit of yellow ochre. You can use any yellow that you want, um, but yellow ochre is a, always a good go-to color for creating light. And just tint it as much as you want. A little bit too much on my brush there. Okay, so now we can achieve that brightness that we want. And really make it bright right in here. And I'm just going to tap lightly with my finger. Remember, this one's coming from behind, so if you go over top, and that's why I wanted to do the light rays first, but I went over and did my lighthouse anyways, but you can just correct it. Like, I can just come right back and add some black in here. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to dab the tops. 
Okay, we're fine here. Again, make it as bright as you want. back into my blue here. Get that light powder blue color again. And it should be wider, skinny, and then wide. A little bit more blue. Back to your very dry powder blue. I'm going to create the softest bit of glow in behind here. And some light. A little bit of yellow ochre and white there. Reapply some highlights along the side. side, top and bottom for my windows, and then take a little bit of green gold, a little bit of pink, yellow ochre, and I feel like I just want to have a little bit of a soft light hitting on that house. And back to my white, right there. And there, we're almost done the little light rays. And then I can start to come in with all my little stars. Before I do that, Use a little bit of my smoky blue color here. And all I'm doing is coming in and around, wiggling my brush. my toothbrush to create that spray. So you want to get your toothbrush, uh, an old toothbrush, really, really wet. And I use an old toothbrush or 
you can get really cheap ones just at the dollar store. Um, I like to use this for stars in my sky as well as um, snow. I'm going to do my little winter Christmas types of paintings. Okay, so now I'm going to turn the brush like this, put my finger around, and I'm going to pull and flick like this. So make sure you have it aimed at the sky. And then I've got a little bit in the water, but I'll just get rid of that. over my horizon line a little bit here and my rocks a bit water down my brush and I'm just going to dab this brush down just dab where I want to have some stars that are a little bit bigger and brighter or you can just go in like this go around and if you feel like you might have too many you can just wiggle them around or off you can make them into more little nebula So I'm going to call this painting all done. I want to thank you guys so much for watching and don't forget to hit that subscribe, like, and leave a comment below. Have a wonderful day everybody and I'll see you next time soon in another video. Bye!